So in the previous lecture, you have learned how to do one sample t-test. Now we're going to discuss about the two sample t-test. So the two sample t-test is when we want to compare the two populations. Of course, as we learned in the previous lectures, it is not possible to obtain the parameter for entire population. Usually we took a sample from each of these population and then we compare the sample because each of the sample represent their respective population. So for example, I want to ask the questions, is there a difference between, between the conservation biology student and marine science and agriculture student in the body height? So just imagine this is two population with a large number of students. So I want to compare if the body height is different between these two populations. So if the body height between these two populations is the same, that means the parameter of these two populations will be the same. So you can imagine if you have plot the distribution of the body height in these two populations, if you overlay this on top of each other, if plot graph is overlapped, okay, then that means that these two populations have the same parameter. So these two populations in terms of their body height is the same. If there's very little overlap, so that means that the two populations will be different because the parameter is different, the mean is different. So we're going to compare this by using a sample. So I took a sample for each of these populations and then perform a statistical test. So it's very important starting from now for all your tutorial, you have to describe your experiment design. As we discussed in the first lecture, so this lecture is about biometry and experiment design. In this lecture, you are not going only to learn the statistic, you are also going to learn the experiment design. Okay. So in this case, there are few elements that you have to describe okay, when you submit your assignment. So after you have your research questions, then you have to explain about your experiment design. So in this topic, it's about two sample tests. So you want to compare two populations. So you have to mention that you have two population. Okay. One is from of the student from the program conservation biology. Another one is from the program marine science and aquaculture. And you want to take one sample for each group. So this is a population and then for each group or or group. So you want to take one sample for each group and then for the sample size of each sample is S student. So that means that for the HS03 you take S student and equal to N. And also for the marine science and aquaculture you also take S student. Then after that you measure the body height from each of these S student. So you might mention all these things in your description. So the population that you are interested in is two population. So these are the two natural grouping or two treatment. Then we have one sample. So this is our replicate. And for based on this, we obtain a sample. And each of the sample consists of a student. So this is an SVA unit or observation unit. And then we measure the body height. So this is a response variable. So you, are, you might, must mention all these five elements when you explain your experiment design. So first is to formulate the research questions, then design your experiment or design your assembly. After you have explained your assembly design, okay, something like this. Then we can proceed to the next step is to formulate our hypothesis. At the same time, you also can start to collect your data. After we have formulated our research questions, describe our experiment design, formulate our statistical hypothesis, and then collect the data, then we can start to perform the statistical analysis. So remember these are the steps you're going to follow now from now on. 
Okay, so first, you're going to formulate hypothesis, set criteria, perform the calculations, compare the test score that you calculated with the critical statistical value that you decide when you set criteria, and also make a conclusion. So first is a hypothesis. So it's different from the one sample test. Now we have two sample. Okay, each of these sample represent a population. So of course, in this case, our no hypothesis is whether there's a differences in body height between the student of HS03 and the student of the Marine Institute. Then how about our alternative hypothesis? So the mean of the body height is different. Okay. Then the second thing is to set a criteria. We need to determine our alpha value, our degree of freedom. So the degree of freedom will be calculated slightly different from the one sample test. Because now we have two sample, so we have the sample size of two sample. And then for each of these sample, we will have their degree of freedom. So what we can do, we can calculate the degree of freedom of each of these sample and then sum it up. Then have to decide whether this is a one tail test or two tail test. Okay, let's say in this case the alpha is 0 0.05. And for the degree of freedom, for the first sample is X student from marine science student. For the second sample, conservation biology is also S student. So it's A minus 1, so N1 minus 1 equal to 7, and then N2 is A minus 1 equal to 7. Okay? Sorry, V1, V2. Then after that, we can put the value here. So V equal to 7 plus 7 is total of 14 for this test. Then for the tail is two tail test because in the hypothesis is equal and unequal. So it's different. After that, try to look for the critical value. Just try yourself. Did you get the correct answer? As we discussed before, it's good to draw a curve. It's not really necessary, but it's good to draw a curve as a, our own reference. Okay. So we know that this is our critical value. Okay. Because this is a two tail test. So our critical value will be on both sides. Okay. One is uh, on the positive side will be the positive value. The negative side will be a negative value. Okay. And we have obtained our critical value and this is our critical region. And now we are ready to move to the next step. So to calculate the independent t-test, the formula is different from one sample t-test. Okay. But before we do the calculations, you have obtained the data. So I will not discuss in detail here, but you should not forget what you have learned in the first week. So after we have obtained the data, the next thing you have to do is to organize your data. So just organize it properly. So in this case, we have the group okay, or, or program. And then we have the body height. So you might have a student number as well here. So for conservation biology program, you have eight students. So one, two, three, until eight. And then for the marine institute student, you have also a student. Okay, a sample of a student. Then for the program, they belong to the same program, HS03 for the first eight student. And then for the rest is from the other institute. After that, you can put the value here. After you have organized your data, so you have to present this in your tutorial, then you need to make a post plot. Okay? So in this case, you have two post plots. Each of these represent the sample from two different populations. Then you can start to do the calculations. So the calculation, the formula is a little bit more complicated than the one sample t-test but it's not too difficult so what you see here you have a t value so you still calculate the t value and then you have the mean for the first sample you have the mean 
for the second sample. So you have to calculate the mean for the first sample and also the mean for the second sample. And the other thing you can are familiar with this one, N1 and N2. So this is the sample size of the first sample and the sample size of the second sample. So it's a number of the observation, number of the observation. What you have not learned yet is this one, what we call the pool variance. So for this, the calculation is this, okay? So to get this value, you need to calculate the sum of square for the first sample, so sum of square, and also the sum of square from the second sample. So the way to calculate sum of square already discussed in the previous lecture in the descriptive statistic, how you calculate the parameters. So remember, before you can obtain the standard deviations, okay, we calculate the sum of square and then divide by the n, the number of the data. So what we need actually, we don't need to calculate the standard deviation, we only need the sum of square. For V1 and V2, we have already discussed just now. So it's a V1 is equal to N1 minus 1. V2 is equal to N2 minus 1. Okay. So you need to calculate the sum of square and then sum it up, divide by the degree of freedom of this test. So you're going to do it slowly, one by one. So first is to calculate the mean, sum of square, the number of observation, the sample size, and also the V. Pause this video for a few minutes. Calculate the mean and also the sum of square, the number of observation and degree of freedom for each of these sample. So just a quick hint. So the sum of square is calculated by after you have obtained the mean. So for example, we have the value, so we arrange in the table, so it's easy for you to calculate. And then sum all the value, divide by n, then we get the mean. So this is the mean. So this is the mean. Okay. After you get the mean, then we can take each of these value minus the mean, we get the deviation. Okay. How different of each of these observation different from the mean? It's just doing this for all the observation. Then after that, we square the value. So we square this value. And then we sum all the value. Okay. So this is the sum of square. Number of observation is 8. Degree of freedom is number of observation minus 1. So the degree of freedom is 7. So by doing this, we have all the value that we need for the second sample. So you can do this for the first sample, which is this one. So after you have calculated this, then we can start to solve the formula. Okay. So first we need to calculate the pool variance. So you just put the sum of square. Okay and then divide by the degree of freedom. Then we get the value. After that, we can calculate for our T value. So I just put the mean, the first mean, second mean, put the pool variance, that we calculated just now and then put the sample size okay in this formula and then just spend some time to do the calculation by using your calculator then you will finally you will get your p value okay t score or calculated t value so the next step is to compare the calculated t with your critical t so this is our calculation just now, okay? And this is the critical T that we obtain from the table. Okay. Because the sign 
of the value. So sometimes you make a comparison a bit difficult. So is you can put the use a graph to make a decision whether you're going to reject or not to reject the no hypothesis. So in this case, the value is somewhere here. In this case, we will not reject the no hypothesis. So we can make a decision. So we can say that we do not reject the no hypothesis because the test score, which is the one that we calculated, is smaller than the critical value. Okay, as we seen in the curve just now. So as a conclusion, there is no significant difference in body height between uh, students from the Marine Institute, okay, for both program, and also the student from the conservation biology. Okay, so there's no body height difference between these two populations. Because we just now we did not reject the no hypothesis. There's few more issues that related to the independent T test. Because um we know that sometimes we have a equal sample size, sometimes we have a equal variance. Okay. And for both sample or both population. But in some cases, the sample size might be different or diff or the same. And the variance can be different or the same. Okay. So you're not going to discuss this in detail, but when we want to perform the calculation, we need to take this into the consideration. So this formula already take this into the consideration, but when you use a software, you have to decide whether your t-test is based on the sample that is equal in sample size and equal variance. So that means that there is another test for you to test whether homogeneity of variance. Okay, so this is assumption. Is correct. Okay, but we're not, not going to discuss this in detail here. So there is an assumption for the independent t-test. First, you have a bivariate independent variable. So you have two groups. Okay, there are two population. And for each population, you will took the samples. Then after that, for each of this group, you will measure the dependent variables. So it's a variables that depend on the populations. So in this case, it's the body height. Okay. Because the body height depends on the population. So the dependent variable is a response variable that has a normal distribution. Because if you remember, we get our critical value from a normal distribution. Okay, we assume that the, the population is normally distributed. And the p value that we obtain, probability that we obtain based on the normal distribution for the t and also for the z. So it's very important to uh, check whether our distribution of the sample, which represents our population, also for a normal distribution. Okay. And as we discussed just now, the homogeneity of variance. So if possible, both sample need to have a similar variance. So there will be no difference, significant difference in the variance among these two sample. So there's a tutorial for this topic. So you have can you need to use the data that you collected in the tutorial tree and then perform a two sample independent t-test. Okay. So remember, go to the smart UMS and read the rubric. You need to write your research question clearly. So you have your research questions. Describe your experiment, de experiment design. After that, collect the data and then organize your data. Summarize your data by using a chart. So in this case, it's a box plot as, as shown in this example. And then perform the test. And this is we have just discussed just now. All the way from the formulate the hypothesis, set a criteria, alpha, tail, the critical value. After that, perform the calculation for the t score. Compare the result 
okay, of your calculated t-score with the critical value and then make a conclusion. If you miss any of this, the mark will be deducted from your tutorial.